mission mini convention uh, that we're having by Zoom. Uh, it's a joy to have you all here. Praise the Lord for your presence and for those who are coming. I know some of you still have some struggles coming up, <clears throat> Lincoln Drive, and uh, mm -hmm. I know that Skookyo can be backed up sometimes, so we know some of you will not be early. But for those of you who are here, <laughs> we're going to get started. Um, uh, as I said, this is Mission Sunday, and we have our guest uh, speakers today, which you will hear from a little bit sooner. Uh, that would be Mark and Estella Trussell. So uh, just want to uh, honor them with their presence. And I want you to all say troll. 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 Tro. So I put it together, trussell. Thank you. That's, that's Mark. That's Mark and Estella. There is no T in their name in the pronouncing. Trosso. Mark and Estella Trosso. So they, they, they have been so wonderful to allow you to abuse their name by calling all sorts of uh, convergences of their name. But I wanted you to have it correct today. Like trophy, it's troll. And okay. like a window cell, it's cell. Mm -hmm. Trosso. Trosso. All right. Thank you. So now, you. may you meet them in person. You can apologize for all the names you called them before. Uh, but I'm sure they will. They have already graciously forgiven all of us. And uh, yes, yes. in the spirit of, of, of the great divine and holy one, we accept them as brothers and sisters, and we are excited Amen. to have Amen. them with Amen. us today. So, Amen. Uh, we're going to do be. things a little Hi, differently. Hi, Mark. So, Hi, um, <laughs> as we proceed, let's, uh, uh, let's just follow as, as the Lord leads. Amen. 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 Yeah, oh yeah. Thank you. 
Amen. 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 <clears throat> well, again, may the Lord continue to bless us as we fellowship together. And um, if we can mute ourselves, please mute yourselves. If we mute you and you are on the phone, uh, you will have to press star six if you want to speak. But uh, requesting that uh, you mute yourselves uh, at this time, if you can. Uh, today, we're only going to have scriptures from Brother Reed and Sister Reed. So, Brother Reed, can you say your word? Say your word. I was glad. I was glad when they said unto me, Amen. Let us come into the house of the Lord. Amen. 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 And, and Psalm 46, 1, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Amen. 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 So we thank you, brother and sister Reed, uh, for blessing us with that. There's a number of things that we're doing today, so um, uh, we we pray that you will just be with us as we continue in our service. And uh, we're getting a lot of feedback, so I guess you're not able to mute yourselves. I will help you. I will graciously help you as we move ahead. Amen. I love you And I lift my heart To worship you Oh my God Rejoice Take joy In what you hear and let it be a sweet, sweet in your ears. I love you and I We have, uh, we 
know, the good thing about Zoom is that we are able to get people to come and fellowship with us that don't even know they're fellowshipping with us. Isn't that awesome? And uh, we, we love the, to have everybody that we invite because they all say yes and they all come. So that's beautiful. Uh, we have a, a local um, organist here at uh, Bethesda uh, Church of God. And um, he has played for us on many occasions. And one of the things he has done throughout the pandemic is to record some of the old traditional hymns uh, on organ. And then we are able to hear him uh, just play. And uh, But the, the sound today that we're going to look at or listen to is an old one, Look and Live. And I just want to read... Um, the first verse, and I will probably read a few verses as he's playing, but the first verse says, I have a message from the Lord, hallelujah. Mm -hmm. The message unto you I give is recorded in his word, hallelujah. It is only that you look and live. Uh, and I think he does a great job in reminding us of this beautiful song, Look and Live. <laughs> wonderful selection yes and live look to jesus now and live. there's a couple verses that i want to say life is offered to you eternal mm -hmm. life your soul shall have if yes. you only look to him yes. look to jesus who alone can save and the final verse is i will tell you how i came mm -hmm. jesus when he made me whole it was believing on his name, oh, his I trusted name. that okay. he saved my soul. My soul. So I know that today we are all happy because we looked. And as a result of looking, we now live. Amen. 
Amen. Amen. All right. So look and live. It is recorded mm -hmm. in the word. Hallelujah. So we praise the Lord for that uh, wonderful selection. And thank you again, Brother Curtis Press. Uh, wonderful selection. And he does this on a number of him. So if, those of you who are on Facebook, uh, just look up Curtis Press and uh, he will. you will find uh, his selections on Facebook. Amen. Amen. Um, Amen. We're going to transition to a time of prayer, and um, we know that some of you come with uh, special requests, so we will allow you to raise your request at this time. If you have a special request, uh, state your request, and we will be sure uh, to take them up to the throne of grace. Brother Joey Jefferson is going to take the request to the throne today. Uh, before he does, we will have a very... Um, uh, song that we used to sing a lot at prayer time but we don't sing it anymore but we'll sing it today uh hear our prayer oh lord yeah, uh, yeah so, sure. uh, uh, right now if you have a request and you are on the phone you can raise your request if you're on the phone please raise your request if you have one Hallelujah. Our phone buddies do not have any requests. Remember, brother and sister, read. All right. And then all others, if you have a request, you can raise them. Remember Bernadette, Sister Bernadette, and her sister Valerie, their older sister Gwen, passed away Friday afternoon. Mm -hmm. So we remember Sister Bernadette Hart and family and their bereavement. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Um, I request for a uh, prayer for wisdom and understanding. For wisdom and understanding. Yes. Okay. Pray for Donald Reed. Donald Reed, yes. Amen. All right, so we will hear this prayer song, and then uh, thankfully we look forward to uh, Brother Joey will uh, follow up with um, the prayer request and any other thing that the Lord laid on his um, heart. Pastor. Yes. Real quick, sorry, a praise report a few months ago, we prayed for our sister Tasha, who suffered a miscarriage. Oh, yeah. and, uh, she just gave birth on Memorial Day to a healthy baby boy. Hallelujah. The church did. Amen. 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 Yes. That's great news. Praise the Lord. He's still in the delivering the business. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, we we first want to thank you, Lord, for waking us all up this morning, Lord, where we are respectively clothed in our right minds, Lord. We don't take it for granted that 
we get another chance to to live and breathe and walk Lord, in, in your glory and, yes. and things that you have done for us years, Lord, we, we thank you we appreciate you um and thank you for this fellowship that we have being able to still get together with with the with the children of God and, and fellowship and and pray and see each other support and uplift each other we thank you for these relationships that have been built over years and years through family generations Lord, and, and through communities that have been able to pour into each other and pour back into those around us bringing the gospel where we go lord we thank you uh for this group that we have here and those that uh may not be here now but have been with us in the past and will certainly uh be with us in the future <clears throat> On this mission Sunday, Lord, we, we would like to pray for those who are who are out spreading the gospel, Father God, who, who have taken up that mantle to spread the word near and far to bring joy and good news to those uh, who may not have it when they are, or even to those who, who may have had it but may have forgotten or may have gotten distracted from the word, Lord. We thank you for ultimately bringing them back, Lord, bringing someone to be that conduit to to pass on lord thank you want to uh, we want to pray for the reeds father god we thank you for their 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 blessing of long life and how they've been faithful to you over the years and you have certainly been faithful to them lord thank you for sustaining them thank you for giving them the wisdom and, and understanding and love to continue to, to push forward and to pour into generations of family and community lord and uh, be upstanding church members, Lord. We don't take it for granted that they that they give themselves to you, that they put themselves aside and, and are vessels for you, Lord. We thank you. We they, uh, we want to pray for Sister Bernadette, Sister Valerie, who are going through some bereavement right now. We know um, a great loss of a sister can be taxing the heart, taxing on the mind and the spirit. We pray that you will support them at this time, Lord, that you will wrap your arms around them, comfort them where they are, Lord, and, and a reassurance and knowing that she is in a better place, Lord, seated with you, Lord. No pain uh, is, is peace and glory where you are. And we pray that for the, uh, that it, that is no longer with her, that you will continue to sustain them. Uh, continue to, to bring back the, the love and memory over the years uh, that they will have shared and, and strengthen them to push on um, day by day, Lord. We continue to, to thank you, Lord, for the blessings, Lord, for the blessings of long life. We want to pray for Sister Davis, Lord, who, who's reaching out to you for wisdom and understanding and, and knowing that that wisdom first comes from a fair God, Lord. We appreciate the sister for, for being humble enough to reach out to you, act to you, Lord. And we pray that you would touch her in a special way, Lord. We pray that in a in the stillness and the quiet of her mind that you would reassure her that you and you alone are God, that you uh that you you put her together in her mo mother's womb. So things she may be seeing now, things she may be experiencing, it's already written that you will bring her through, Lord, that you will bring her the lessons, Lord, and that she is ultimately protected, Lord. We thank you. We thank you for the sister and our fellowship with her and pray that you will continue to guide her, Lord, continue to, to build her up uh, and, and her trust in you and, and the relationship between you and her so that she will learn to hear that voice, Lord, and learn to act on the things um, and, and that your will be done, um, but she will learn how to interface with you in that place. We want to pray for Brother Donald Reed, where he may be right now. Lord, if you will put a touching on his body, Lord, on his mind, on his spirit, Lord, comfort him where he is. Lord, you've been faithful to Brother Reed for a long time, and in, in turn, he has been faithful to you as well. We pray that you will continue to support him, Lord, sustain him, um, be more than his daily bread, Father God. We pray that um, when when pain comes in, <clears throat> excuse me, when uh, trials and tribulation come and pain comes, that you are the, the ultimate healer, Lord, the ultimate reliever, um, and that you will continue to watch over your son, your Lord, your child, and all that he may need. 
We got a praise report from Sister Tasha. Lord, we, we thank you for just being able to do miraculous things, Lord, to be able to, to bounce back and bring a beautiful life into this world. It could be done by no one but you. So we, we thank you, God, um, for what the sister may have been through. Lord, it certainly could have been a dark place, but joy does come in the morning. And we thank you for the bundle of joy that they do now have. We pray that you will continue to be a blessing on the family moving forward as they will see that your faithfulness is true, Lord, that no matter how dark it gets at night, there is another side. And, and we thank you, Lord. We bless you again. We just want to thank you for all you've done for us. Um, all of those here on the Zoom um, that is, certainly, Lord, have been in relationship with you longer than I have been alive, Lord, and they, they know you and you know them through or through, Lord. We pray that you continue to bless them, Lord, continue to teach them in new ways, uh, continue to have them open up to, to be, continue to be a vessel for you and that you will pour through us, through each other so that we can pour into our families and our communities and those around us, Lord, and continue spreading that gospel in a way that we can uplift those that are downtrodden, that have gone through loss and, and hurt and pain, Father God. We thank you for all that you've done for us and that you'll continue to do. Thank you for keeping us from danger, seen and unseen. Look, and we pray that as we all continue uh, to move about, that you will put a hedge of protection around us, Lord. Uh, protect us as we come and go and ultimately uh, keep us nestled in your love. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Thank you, Brother Amen. Joy. Thank you, praise the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Yes, Lord. Thank you. Uh, just to just to share a little bit uh, that you know our support, our giving, uh, we support or not support, but we uh, uh, we help in the support of many uh, missions efforts. And um, I just want to enumerate the ones that we are actively assisting right now. Uh, we are assisting Campus Outreach uh, in Charlotte, and that's um, the grandson of, uh, of um, our dear uh, brother Shepherd, Howard W. Shepherd Sr., his grandson, Chase Carroll. Uh, that's, his, oh. that's his daughter's, Patricia's son. Uh, mm -hmm. And then Campus Crusade for Christ, Michelle Melkor, Tom and Linda Fritz, and Chuck and Ginny Lewis. And we've been supporting them for, wow, decades. Mm -hmm. uh, then Child Evangelism Fellowship, right here, located in the only section of Philadelphia. And uh, we praise the Lord for them. Uh, Have Christ Will Travel and Bonnie Bazemore. And uh, we know that uh, Reverend Jeddah has gone home to be with the Lord. His son, Paul, has taken up the mantle and is um, uh, allowing the Lord to use him to help Half Christ with Travel to continue. Uh, we're supporting the Heart Mission Training Institute, as well as Neighborhood Crusade right here in Philadelphia uh, with um, the Sawyers. Uh, and we know also that the founder of uh, Neighborhood Crusades um, went home to be with the Lord, Brother Melvin Floyd. Uh, the Lord has taken him home, but the work, uh, we, the Lord says, you know, that they shall rest from their labor, but their works shall follow them. And Neighborhood Crusade for Christ is continuing uh, uh, under now the leadership of Dan Sawyer and his wife, Esther. Uh, Poor Children Assistance Project in Haiti, uh, Georgia Missions, Annette Smith, she was on a few Wednesday nights ago, and you know that there are, they, their most recent project is building um, a home, uh, 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 so they're looking to be able to house um, uh, missionaries when they come through, so that's a beautiful effort that they're um, lifting up. Um, we have a Reformed Evangelistic Fellowship, uh, uh, which is Harold and Sarah Shepian. 
and of course their mom still uh, worshiping with us. And I'm going to leave this one for the last. So just skip and go to people concerned for missions and windows of hope. And the one I skipped is none other than Wycliffe Bible translators. And today we have Mark and Estella Troso with us who are uh, uh, missionaries with uh, Wycliffe. And um, I, my task is to introduce them. So I will make a feeble effort at introducing them to you and I will allow them to induce, introduce each other uh, in a few minutes. Um, uh, so we're gonna do a few things. We're gonna have uh, the scripture for today's uh, um, fellowship read by Sister Jean. Then um, you will hear the song, Here I Am, Lord. And, and then, uh, and that's a song that the choir used to sing. Um, and I think the choir did a much better job, but we don't have it recorded. So I had to find someone else to do it. And um, then, then you will hear from Mark and Estella. Uh, we have had them in our midst before, and um, I really am, was impressed uh, with their visit to us. And I, I, don't ask me what they actually spoke about, um, my, you know, there's certain things are imprinted on your memory and that's the memory you have. And the memory I have was when we were downstairs, uh, that Saturday and they got us around in a circle and we all were, uh, locked into each other's arms. And then they pointed out that each of us represented different facets in making this missions work. And we realized through that, that every one of us broke that chain, that link, that it wasn't impossible, but it was going to make it very difficult for the ministry to continue as powerfully as it was. So I, I can tell you, no matter what they said, what they did left me with this impression that even though we are a small link in their chain of ministry, our small link is important to the success of Wycliffe uh, Bible Translators and to the people in Papua New Guinea where they are serving. They happen to be home on furlough now and they've been in uh, close to us in Lancaster, uh, but um, they will be heading back out again uh, for the fall. So we want to uh, just welcome Mark and Estella uh, uh, something that is unusual, I would say, for them is that they both were missionaries first and married second. Uh, so most of the couples that we have were married first and, and ministry second, but they they were both in independently in ministry with Wycliffe. And uh, so Wycliffe, we owe you for the, the, the harmony that you've developed with Mark and Estella. Uh, so... Um, we're going to hear the scripture, then the song, and then the next voice you hear will be that of Mark and Estella Troso. God bless you. Uh, Sister Jean will now read the scripture from John 21, 15 to 17, and she's reading the Passion Translation. After they had breakfast... Jesus said to Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, do you burn with love for me more than these? Peter answered, yes, Lord, you know that I have great affection for you. Then take care of my lambs, Jesus said. Jesus repeated his question the second time. Simon, son of Jonah, do you burn with love for me? Peter answered, yes, my Lord, you know that I have great affection for you. Then take care of my sheep, Jesus said. Then Peter, then Jesus, sorry, asked him again, Peter, son of Jonah, do you have great affection for me? Peter was saddened by being asked the third time and said, my Lord, you know everything. You know that I burn with love for you. Jesus replied, then feed my lambs. 
May God add a blessing to his reading. Amen. Amen. I the Lord of sea and sky, I have heard my people cry, all who dwell in dark and sin, my hand will save. I who made the stars of night, I will make their darkness bright. Who will bear my light to them? Whom shall I send? Here I am, Lord. Here High Street family. Good morning. Um, I need to first ask Pastor David if uh, you can enable me to share my screen. I already did. Okay, let's see here. There we go. All righty. Well, good morning, everyone. We're coming to you all the way from Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Good morning. Good morning. That's not very far, is it? <laughs> when we uh, first got on, we had this island scene in, in the back of us. And uh, no, we're not in Papua New Guinea. We're, we're right down the road from you. And 
wish we could be uh, here with you uh, in person. However, um, this will have to do. So you're not forsaking the assembling yourselves together. You're just doing it in a creative way. Amen. So we're just uh, glad to be a be a part of it this morning. So thank you for uh, inviting us. I see a picture of our handsome sons there. I just want to thank you, Pastor High Street Church, for your partnership with us. I every time we think of you, we thank God for you. And I took a screenshot of us this morning of you all as a reminder of the wonderful body of Christ. And I will say personally, as an African-American, I am so encouraged by you and your faithfulness to partner with us in this ministry. And you know, I've said in the past that there aren't a lot of us in missions, but those of us who are involved, we are blessed and we're thankful for you. And I'm just so encouraged that I'm gonna use that screenshot just to remind me as we work on diversity committees and Wycliffe, God is moving in his church. High Street is a part of what God is doing in our midst. Thank you. Amen. We are encouraged too to just hear the uh, list of different ministries and outreaches that you're involved with and supporting and uh, just amazed uh, how you're playing a part in so many different ways to minister to people. And, and so thank you for allowing us to be just a small part of that. Now I want to say uh, ahead of time, uh, I apologize to those that are um, listening by phone, but cannot see. We have a lot of visuals this morning. Right? We have a picture of our family up. Uh, we're going to show a few videos and PowerPoints. Uh, we'll try to talk uh, some as as much as we can for those that can't actually see. Um, so we're going to go right now to a, a video. Uh, talks about why Bible translation. Why is Bible translation important? And before I play this, uh, that's showing on the screen at all. Yes. Okay. Is there a button there to push uh, for the sound to come through as well? To the bottom left. Okay. I can see it here. Bottom left. Well, not anymore because you've just moved. The ah, okay. <laughs> All right. Let me see. Let's try it again. Yes, there you are. It's, it's pretty good. Brother Mark, if you can narrate because we're not hearing the sound. Did I hear that you didn't hear that at all? We couldn't hear the sound. We could see it, but we couldn't hear it. Okay. I know that there is a 
another button that allows us to broadcast the sound. Let's see if I can find it. Oh, share computer scale sound. Okay. All right. Um, hopefully that will work. Well, that was a short, very short video talked about why Bible translation. Um, if we just think about where would we personally be without God's word? Just think about that for a moment. And we have access to so many uh, versions in English um, that, you know, we sometimes I feel it's almost unfair you know, that we, we have so many uh, different versions, different translations, whereas many people around the world don't even have one verse of scripture in their language. So uh, that video was just to kind of paint uh, a, the picture of why Bible translation is important. And, and you're very a knowledgeable congregation, so I'm, I'm sure that you uh, understand that. Uh, we have a number of things to get to. So we thought we should just uh, refresh uh, memories of who we are and just share a very uh, short bit of our testimonies before we go any farther. For myself, uh, I grew up uh, in Warminster uh, for the first uh, 12, 13 years of my life, and my grandfather passed to the church in Willow Grove, which is, you know, very close to you all. Okay. And my grandfather, um, I just remember him as the godliest man that I knew. And I would try, when I got old enough, I, I was allowed to sit on the front row uh, by myself and, and just soak in what I was hearing. First Sunday of every month was Mission Sunday. We had a missionary or we had something, some challenge about missions. And uh, so it made a big impact on me. However, for whatever reason, I never thought about myself as being a missionary. It wasn't until uh, I went off to college and I went to uh, a concert. If you screen the musician uh, who died in the plane crash, he's written some uh, many uh, songs that we uh, are familiar with but he was also a very uh, prolific writer. He wrote many uh, articles and tracks. And at that concert, which was actually after he had died, uh, they had a memorial concert. I picked up a tract that said, that was titled, Why You Should Go to the Mission Field. That was the last thing that this man wrote. And I picked it up that night and I read it and I was at a point in my life where I didn't know what I was doing. I was in college, but I changed majors three times, uh, and I was getting ready to, to drop out of college as a senior because I didn't know what I was doing. And so that track, Why You Should Go to the Mission Field, was sent at the, the perfect time the Lord sent it on. And beyond, beyond a shadow of a doubt, I knew God was calling me into missions. I was working at a local uh, hospital at the time. So I thought, well, what kind of mission should I be involved with? Medical missions or, or what? Uh, but in my devotions, I read in Romans chapter 10, where it says, how can they call on him in whom they have not heard? How can they hear unless someone preach? How can someone preach unless they are sent? And then verse 17 hit me. So faith comes by hearing and hearing by what? The word of God. The word of God. And it struck me. That there are people around the world that do not have the scriptures. So this was back prior to the internet days. I'm trying to find uh, Wycliffe Bible translators. Uh, where's their number? How can I get their number and call them? So I found the number, and that's a very short part of my testimony of how the Lord started leading me uh, into the ministry of Bible translation. I grew up in a non-Christian home, but we did go to church every Sunday. I'm from Mississippi, the Bible Belt. And what do you do in the Bible Belt? You go to church whether you're saved or not. So the Lord used that to uh, get me to church. It was uh, this 1981 when my sister and husband 
and her husband moved back from Chicago, Illinois. They had gone to Bible church, gotten involved in ministry there. And my sister, who was the most religious of us, realized after she became a Christian that if she wasn't saved, the rest of us were not either. So they moved back, they moved back to Mississippi in the 80s, early 80s, with one goal, and that was to reach their family for Christ. And the Lord is gracious and merciful. I was 21 at the time, and as she was sharing the gospel with her family, invited us to church. We didn't have a problem with going to church, so we went to this Bible church and heard the uh, gospel preached clearly, expositorily, verse by verse, and that's when I gave my life to Jesus. Now, the funny part of that is she thought that me being 21, I would be the last person to get saved as a sense of humor, and I was the first one to get saved. So we teamed up together and started to share the gospel with our family. And I got involved in Wycliffe through the same sister who invited me to a banquet one evening to learn about missions. And I was actually going to get information for the missions at our church. But the Lord used that evening to invite me to be involved in Bible translation. A little girl from Mississippi had never heard of Bible translation, didn't know that there were over 6,000 languages at the time. Now there's quite more than that that there are people around the world without the scriptures. And I became a Christian and I all my problem was going to the bookstore, deciding which version of the Bible to pick and hearing that there were groups around the world with nothing really impacted my life. And I joined as a single, that's where I met Mark and there, here we are, the rest is history. <laughs> we're gonna, Show oh, a video now. Um, yes, yeah, I forget. Uh, up next is a video that was produced by Micah, our, our youngest son. And oftentimes people ask us, you know, what were your children growing up on the mission field? Well, this Micah, he loves Papua New Guinea. He loves the country. And he produced this little video with some friends there of some of the work of Bible translation in Papua New Guinea. And the, the sound is basically a song, so you won't hear any information, but uh, so, so for those listening by phone, hopefully you hear the song, but uh, catch, the, catch the words on the video as we play it. Your love is like radiant diamonds bursting inside us. We cannot contain your love, will surely come find us like blazing wildfire singing your name God of
need remains. That was a little uh, introduction to Papua New Guinea. And now we want to uh, talk a little bit more uh, specifically about uh, our involvement, some of the things. Uh, so I'm going to give it over to Stella now. Hope that you enjoyed that little video, Juice for Our Son. It's always a blessing to a blessing to share with you our partners what God is doing in the world, but actually what you are doing in the world because we are your representatives in Papua New Guinea. So oftentimes we get focused on the task of what we're doing and sometimes we miss the people. So we wanna give you a few snapshots of some of the people you've sent us to serve with. This is a picture of Zach, Maria and Amy in 2016. Some of you may remember that uh, Zach is our IT specialist. We've shared about him in our prayer letters before. And he's from the Barai Bar language group. Now his group has received the New Testament in their own language and he's passionate about being involved in Bible translation. So he's using his as an IT person on in, in Bible translation. This is a picture of he and his first wife, Maria and their daughter, Amy. Tragically, Maria passed away in childbirth in 2017. One of the main causes of death in Papua New Guinea for women is childbirth. In our roles in our care at the time, we were very close friends with them. So Mark got on the plane and went to spend about two weeks with Zach in the capital city when his wife passed away. The baby, the baby girl was without oxygen when Maria died in childbirth and she passed four days later. It was heart wrenching for Mark to be there standing with Zach while Zach was pumping oxygen to the baby because there is, was a shortage of staff in the hospital to do this for the baby. We were able to serve and encourage Zach and Amy for three months before we came home and would leave them for a little kept in touch with Zach and Amy throughout the time that we've been in the States. Daughter Amy now is about seven years old and she prays, he says, regularly for us. Last year, uh, two years after the loss of his first wife, Zach married Celia, a young woman from his village. And they later welcomed a healthy baby boy, Mateo, which means gift from God in Hebrew and devoted to God in Greek. Mateo was born about the same time as his wife lost the first baby. So you can imagine that he was quite uh, in despair. But by God's grace, the little boy is now uh, doing well. Zach recently wrote us, wrote Mark and said, it is indeed a reminder to me that God is still faithful. I thank God for you and his sister Stella because God sent you to PNG to touch his life. I'm one of the many you touched that has been changed. I'm already seeing using my experiences to touch lives in the country of PNG. Pray for Zach, Celia, Amy, and baby Mateo. Vernon is a young man who we had the privilege to mentor in our roles in 2019 in project management. He joined the team as an intern. He is very gifted in administration and leadership. And to be honest, he really didn't need us. But we were there to help the organization to learn how to manage uh, property maintenance or projects that was something that was difficult for them. So Wycliffe asked us and, and, our, and BTA asked us to come in and be mentors. And Vernon was one of the young people there. Vernon, after high school, was selected to go to university in the Philippines. Like many young people, when they leave home, he got in touch with the wrong crowd. Vernon would spend two years in prison and for the first year had no contact at all with his family. We were serving in our mentor's role. Vernon had his 25th birthday and he had not had a birthday cake since he was five years old. So he kind of adopted us and called us mom and dad. So we had to give him a birthday party on his 21st birthday. Vernon has a passion for Bible translation and he met Jesus he was lived, uh, serving in prison. When he got out of prison, he, want, he came back home and he wanted to go to school and having a prison record didn't help him in his, adventure, his endeavors. And one day he went and talked to the professor, the administrator at the 
local college NG, and he just told his story. He said, I really want to go to school. And Australia says, I hear your story, son. Everybody deserves a second chance. So they allowed him to enroll in school and he is very faithfully trying to finish his Bachelor of Science degree in political science. So there's no government uh, aid for students in Papua New Guinea. Basically, you you have the your family line that helps you go to school or you get a loan and even that's difficult. Last year, when COVID shut down in Bye. Papua New Guinea, when down in Papua New Guinea, Vernon was not able to go to school. We have online options here in the United States, but that wasn't true for him. So he lost a whole semester of school. So he's slotted to finish his degree in 2023. And Vernon wrote us and asked us to pray for him to get the deposit that he needed to go to school. And we just felt led to pray for him and trust God would provide for him. And we're happy to say that after about a week of praying, God provided the finances for Vernon to go to school. And on the way to school, he got on the bus and this was the song he heard playing on a bus in Papua New Guinea. One day at a time, Lord Jesus. Some of you remember the song by Christy Lane. He hadn't heard that song before, so he Googled it and he said in tears, he went and paid his school fees. Pray for Vernon as he's going to school and as he gets trying to get his degree in political science. And I be, believe he will be a huge asset to his country uh, with his gifting. And if there's any young people on the thread here, or if you have young people, try to encourage them. We have blessed in America to have so many options for school. That's not true for many young people in other parts of the world. Meet Aoi. Aoi is our dear friend and colleague. He's a main translator for his language group, Amam. There are 2,000 Amam speakers. They live in a remote section of PNG at around 7,000 feet. Vernon visited uh, Aoi in 2019. It took them seven hours to get to their village. Now, Vernon is, is, is healthy and pretty young and strong, but he said he was shaking when he got to that village after seven hours. Aoi is committed and faithful to translation despite various hardships with no outside funding. We were able to help get a phone to Aoi under our mentor role, and we occasionally get messages from him on Facebook and WhatsApp. Three years ago, Aoi lost his laptop, and he continues to do translation of Revelation by pen and paper. You see the photo down there. Then when the ink ran out, he found a pencil to do Bible translation. That's commitment. A friend donated and sent a used laptop to PNG in last year, uh, in February of last year. He was just able to get that computer a couple months ago due to COVID. And Zach was able to help get it working and sent to him. All 27 New Testament books have now been translated, but only 10% uh, of the New Testament has been consultant checked. And that's holding him down from moving forward. You can't go forward in the process until that is done. July 2020 was the time they were to do some checking, but COVID hit the country pretty bad there. So now that's been indefinitely postponed. Pray for Awi and the Amman people for progress in the midst of COVID and for consultants to be available to do the checking. Pray for spiritual and physical health and for financial resources needed to publish the New Testament. Meet our global partnerships team that we have a privilege of serving with now. We have colleagues that we are working with all over the world. And last February 2020 was the last international trip that we were able to take in our roles to the Solomon Islands. And we were going there to get training in our current roles. And we haven't, our roles are coordinators for the Pacific area that would allow us to travel three to four months, excuse me, three to four times a year overseas, but with COVID that hasn't happened. So we're learning from the US. Now, interesting fact about our trip to Solomon's in February, 2020, we went there and Solomon Island has a small little airport in Honiara, which is the capital of the Solomon's Island and small little airport. And when we went there, they took our temperature, they were asking questions and there were two of our colleagues that were coming from different parts of the world, I think from the Philippines and from Africa. And they sent them back to their home areas because they had been to an area that had been infected with COVID. 
Now, fast forward a week later, when we come back home, I come back to the United States, they see my passport, they see I've been out of the country, and they just says, welcome home. And of course, we know what happened about a month later, everything broke loose here in the United States. So I just thought that was interesting. This is a diversity roundtable that Wycliffe Leadership has invited me to be a part of. And in addition to our roles, I get to serve on this committee. Our leadership desires for us to become more uh, diverse and inclusive in our organization. And this roundtable is made up of individuals and staff members from various backgrounds to serve as advisory groups to Wycliffe as we look at how we can become more like the American, not the American, the global church. It's a blessing to be a part of this group, but I will admit that it's a little challenging at times. So you can, you know what some of the things we go through in our, in our world, but being a part of this group reminds me of Revelation 5, 9, that the blood of Jesus purchased people from every tongue, tribe, and nation. So this is one of the things that keeps us busy. Now in 2019, COVID cases were almost, for like several months, there were like nine people that had contracted COVID. Well, in 2020, had contracted COVID. There's a, go to the next uh, slide. Now you see that there, you see there's a huge rise in cases this year now, and the country is really struggling right now to keep up with the cases that are happening. We just heard last week about a colleague of ours who got COVID and didn't have any medicine or anything to treat him. He was he was tested for, but they just used some natural remedies there, ginger and lemon, I believe, to take care of them. So pray for the country of PNG experiencing uh, quite a bit of COVID cases and the infrastructure there health-wise is not the best. They, we have heard that they've gotten some vaccines in country. There's mixed emotions on both sides to get it or not to get it. So pray for our beloved PNG health workers there when thankfully things haven't gotten too far out of control, but sometimes when something like this hits pe hit people can resort to fighting and doing things like that, but we haven't heard of any that uh, just yet. So little picture report of what God's doing in Papua New Guinea through your partnership. And before I uh, transition over to the next PowerPoint um, that we'll be sharing, uh, Pastor, you did mention we're on furlough. We actually, uh, from that time where we were in the Solomon Islands in February, we uh, took an assignment where we would be living in the US most of the time, and then taking trips over to Papua New Guinea to help organize and, and communicate about the projects that the organization is supporting. And then COVID came and shut everything down. So we're in a season where we are doing, serving in our role in global partnerships as field coordinators in the Pacific uh, from the states and not being able to travel. There's no travel for anybody who would be coming and going, say, uh, for instance, like business trips, which is what they would, the, the government would consider what we would do. Very few people are being able to get in or out who are there long term. So we continue to work from home. Uh, we're in Lancaster because we are able to work from wherever, but we're in Lancaster because we are in a season where we are um, ministering to my mother, an elderly mother, and helping out my siblings and care for her. So that's why we are living in a missionary residence here in Lancaster and not back at home in, in Dallas. So what we're uh, able to do is to um, help coordinate projects. And so we want you to meet one of these uh, groups that Global Partnerships is supporting and that we're involved with uh, the Kananua people in Papua New Guinea. So we want you to meet them, meet the Kananua. 
Uh, are you able to see that PowerPoint there? Yes. Okay. So for those of you that don't know where Papua New Guinea is, um, it is in the South Pacific, just north of Australia. You can see it circled there. Uh, the island of New Guinea is the second largest island in the world, and Papua New Guinea is the right side of that island, uh, sovereign nation. There's a little bit of closer look. And where the, the uh, red circle is, uh, Papua New Guinea is uh, divided into provinces, and the Milne Bay province is where the Kaninua people live. They go back where we live when we're in Papua New Guinea, you see the blue dot there, that's where we usually live up in the highlands. Uh, the Kananua are in Milne Bay. And in Milne Bay, they live on an island called Good Enough Island. And so this is focused in on where this people group that we're working with live. So Good Enough Island, it's very unique. It's only 24 miles by 16 miles. And this island rises sharply to over 8,000 feet above sea level, which makes it one of the most precipitous islands in the world. We have a friend who actually had the pilot for the organization that's flown in and out of there. He said it's just a very amazing how quickly it rises uh, out of the ocean. So welcome to Kananua. Here are some of the faces of uh, the people who live on this island that speak this language. Uh, the people there uh, are mostly subsisted farmers. They grow yams, sweet potatoes, taro, uh, bananas, and they uh, use some for their own family. Some they sell to local outdoor market for protein. They catch fish from the ocean. Um, and then I want to introduce you to Joseph and Joyce Park. Uh, they are the translation advisors for the Kananua. Uh, this is a Korean couple uh, from Canada. They serve through Wycliffe Canada and they are not the translators, they are advisors. Actually, uh, this is the translation group. These are people who love the Lord, who are committed to seeing the Bible translated into their own language. So uh, among the men, you have Soktes, Jack Dyson, Levy, and Sylvester, and uh, some of the women who are supportive there. Uh, some are actually going off to training to continue to build the team of translators. And so the parks uh, advise them as they have gone off to school and, and are uh, well-versed in helping to help national translators do Bible translation. Well, back um, a number of years ago, the Kananua, they heard about uh, a course that was being offered and they sent people off to this course where they could uh, learn to do Bible translation. You see um, on the right side of that banner, VITAL, V-I-T-A-L, that was the course that they went, S-I-L is Wycliffe's name uh, on the field. And they worked hard and were able to see a mini Bible uh, translated and then they dedicated. It. Now the, the parks were not there in the early years with them, but they came along uh, side of them and helped them move forward in uh, producing this mini Bible. And in that uh, Bible, they have the book of Marks, Mark, Acts, Jonah, and then they have portions of Genesis and Exodus. So that was dedicated in 2016. And these people uh, are very motivated to have the scripture in their language and they use it uh, in church. Whenever there's a passage that is from those books, they will look at, at it in their, um, in their own language, in the Kananua language. Otherwise, they are using a neighboring language they don't understand well or an English Bible that they don't understand well. But when the scriptures are in their own language, they're very motivated. They have devotion times at home and uh, small groups. So 
Fast forward five years, this past November, um, they celebrated the fourth anniversary of having their mini Bible. And such as um, what we have, maybe our church picnics or whatever, uh, where we gather together, they gather together uh, to just do different things to help emphasize and celebrate having the scriptures in their language. One of the things that they did was they would write down how the scriptures have um, impacted them. And so one of the things they did during their dedication, people wrote down uh, a variety of, of things, topics of how the scriptures have encouraged them. Uh, the next few uh, slides I'm going to show, you will hear actual, actual um, Aninua people speaking. So the next slide, you will see a man who's giving dictation. He is reading scripture, and the people sitting around are writing down what they are hearing. <laughs> So these people are writing down what they're hearing. These are obviously people who have a proficiency in literacy. Not all do. And as they wrote them down, uh, they would actually uh, make corrections from what they heard. So, you know, we go to our church, church picnics. We have uh, food and games. Well, they're there uh, doing things that are surrounded uh, to do with the uh, the scriptures that they already have. Yona yavi nene idibwan. Nine. Yona iyavisi ibwado. Yau tene ebeniu. Yavi nene akuduko. So these few slides I'm going to show are people who uh, have learned literacy and are reading the scriptures out loud in their own language. <laughs> You notice that it's now dark and people are still around reading the scriptures. People are still around standing there and listening. Uh, there's great excitement among the Kananua people for having the scriptures in their language. Uh, the next uh, slide I will show where uh, you have young people who are involved in memorizing the scriptures. So you have a leader there uh, encouraging them from the scriptures, and now you're going to see them uh, quoting. <laughs> This is very uh, encouraging to see young people memorizing the scriptures in their own uh, language, their own mother tongue. And the, the leaders, the adults in uh, among the Kaninu are, are uh, excited about this because uh, they have concern uh, for their their young children, their youth, even the young adults who are going to be their future leaders because the lack of jobs, marijuana, uh, homebrew, homemade alcohol, uh, feed into a lack of hope uh, for their future. Many are illiterate, uh, have a low education level, so many do not have hope for the future, and many do not truly know Christ. So the kind of new leadership believes that the lives of these younger generations can be transformed by having the scriptures in Kainua. We'll see a photo here. That's Joseph um, advising the translation team uh, in the picture on the right in the lower left. Uh, if you can make out, this was back in October. 
up in the top left, uh, John chapter four. Uh, that's where they were at uh, in translation back uh, a few months back ago. And they have uh, some things that are already been uh, translated and are waiting uh, to be consultant checked. Once they do translation, rough translation, a consultant has to check it to make sure that it is uh, truly accurate and understandable. So, so far, if you see this graph, the books that have already been published, Mark, Acts, Jonah, portions of Genesis and Exodus, that's the mini Bible. The books that are finished and awaiting consultant checking, they have an Old Testament panorama, the books of Ruth and Esther. And they have books that are in revision after the first draft. You see Luke and the epistles of John. Currently, they are drafting the book of John. And the next books that are scheduled uh, will be Matthew and Revelation. Some of the other uh, activities, they're working on a script for the Jesus film, uh, Bible story videos, Bible story booklets. They are training new translators and con continuing in literacy. Well, what, what is this all about? Uh, this is about the, the word of God. Isaiah chapter 40, 40, verse 8. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. And among the uh, Kaninua, uh, they're just excited to have God's word. Uh, briefly, trying to move through here quickly, there are some uh, prayer requests that uh, have been asked for because of uh, the covid crisis. Uh, they've been, it's been very difficult for them to get together for the parks. They are up in the highlands, the Kananua, and so they're trying to do things electronically. It's difficult. So just pray that they will be able to make connections because they're, they're trying to get some of this consultant work done. Um, the advisor checking for uh, Gospel of John, uh, the village testing of Luke 13 to 24, and then John epistles, and that the Kananua people would progress in reading their own languages through the books that they recently sent there. So we've moved through pretty quick. Um, hopefully, um, you learned a little bit about what we're involved in. Uh, I'm going to stop the sharing here. And at this point, uh, we just want to open it up to any uh, questions that uh, you may all have for us. If you have questions, you can just go ahead. Uh, if you're on the phone and you need to unmute, star six will unmute you. Yeah, um, I see that you have you have some of the natives help with the translation of the language. Who does the consultant check in? Uh, those who would do the consultant checking are experienced translators. These are mostly expatriate um, people who have done translation. They will come in. They will not know Kaninua. What they do is they do a back translation. So they translate it from Kaninua back to English to make sure that it is accurate. So they're looking for things that uh, maybe the, the translators and uh, the parks as advisors uh, uh, aren't aware of or didn't catch, uh, just so that they can make sure accuracy is very important and being able to communicate it in a natural way into the language. There are Papua New Guineans who have been trained to do consultant checking. It's a process, okay. they have to be trained, but they- there are, there are some Papua New Guineans as well, and you can pray for them because it's, it's quite, uh, challenging for them at times. So now they take the language and try not to transfer it back to English? Is that what it is? Uh, a back translation would take what they've translated into Kaninua, uh -huh. then they would tra translate it back for the consultant who does not know that language to make sure they've translated it and now they're gonna translate it back to make sure that, that it's, it's accurate. Okay, okay. It's a process. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I have a Lots question. Lots of checks uh, and balances uh, in the in the process. Yeah. I have a question. Um, we have the um, New King James Version, the Living Translation, the NIV, and 
when you do your translation, what version is it translated into? Or they what do you a, call your translation? They use a variety of, of different sources. Um, they, they will use they will use the biblical languages they will they will use some of the different translation and they have what they call a translator's toolbox you think mm -hmm. about uh you know having a regular toolbox you need different tools for different things they have a toolbox for translators that they can go to to uh help them with this or that so it's not just one source they they look at a lot of different things again to make sure that they are they're accurate, they're true to the word, and that it's communicating well in the la language of the people. Not just in the language, but the culture. In our culture, we have in certain translations, you know, I heard uh, Sister Jean was reading from the message. There are different versions we have in America because of different ways we understand the meaning of words. In Papua New Guinea, one example, the seat of emotions is not the heart. The seat of the emotions is the stomach. Mm. So when they're doing a translation in that in that culture, they have to get the word that fits for that culture. It doesn't transfer. So don't think translate from English to to to, uh, to another language. Think of cultural translations as well. Thank you. Hey, I had a question about the uh, Papua New Guinea is a very rich, is very rich in natural resources. Uh, and it's, but it's no longer colonized. I know it was German, Australian, New Zealand. Is there still some political stuff going on over there that we have to be aware of and we can keep in, in our prayer life as far as uh, a different way to share some of that wealth so that the people that we're translating the Bible for, we can also translate some uh, economic stability and things like uh, that. Yeah, very good uh, observation and question there. Uh, Papua New Guinea did gain their independence in 1975 from Australia. It was very peaceful. Uh, Australia moved them toward, toward that. Uh, the founding fathers, um, leaders were pretty good. Um, there have been a lot of rough spots. Uh, some of them, you know, even Papua New Guineans think maybe it was too soon because you're right. Uh, Papua New Guinea is very rich in resources. Uh, however, there's um, a lot of different, you've got 850 different uh, languages. And that, so you have those different cultures and everybody's wanting their own person to be in there. And so, here we we're largely a two party in the U United States. We have others, but you know Republicans and Democrats. There they have scads of of parties and uh, always trying to get people in. It's a parliamentary system, so they follow what England does uh, mm -hmm. in terms of parliament. Uh, there's a fair bit of corruption. Uh, people uh, you get in power are looking for uh, money for themselves and their clan. And so they may sell away uh, some of the uh, access to uh, the natural resources they have. So it, it is quite challenging uh, there when it comes to, to that. It's largely, it's largely peaceful. Uh, there's not been any coups or anything, but, but people do get up in arms over politics there. Mm -hmm. You, you asked how you can pray for that. The young man, Vernon, that I shared with you, who's going to school for political science, he is very, very concerned for his country with the corruption and so forth. So pray for godly leaders, people who will be able to, uh, only people who will be able to lead the country with godliness and wisdom. Yes, coffee, wood, so much there, but the people don't get the benefits of a lot of those natural resources outsiders yeah. do just a quick cursory glance looks like it's, it's gold silver platinum oil all, you know so nickel yes there's all sorts of of that there natural gas yes but the people aren't getting right. it. So, it sounds like guyana <laughs> I think, uh, yeah. 
Yeah, I thank for what was concerned, and you answered my question about uh, our focus, at least personally, my focus uh, for prayer. Amen. And we will see a change. Amen. Amen. If there's no other questions, we can give uh, some prayer, personal prayer requests. Just real quickly, this is uh, Sister Jackie. You mentioned something about the ambivalence where, where it relates to the COVID vaccines. Could you expound on that a little bit more? What's, what is it about? They do, yes, they don't yes. want it, what? Yes, ma'am, for a year, there was no COVID cases in Papua New Guinea, very few. very few, about nine. So the people felt that there was some protection, some covering over them. They have heard, believe it or not, the rest of the world watches America and what's happening here. And they've seen the controversy here over uh, whether COVID is real, whether it's, you know, imagined or conspiracy. So that plays over into the PNG government and belief system as well. So the controversy is if there's no real virus, why do we need a vaccine? And you know, it's there, Australia has sent vaccines to Papua New Guinea and people are choosing to get it or not. They say they have a strong immune system. They don't want to take something. They don't want to be guinea pigs. They've, they've heard somewhere in Africa that the vaccine has been there. So they, they, are, they hear what's happening in the rest of the world and they hear the debates. So it goes there too. Yeah. Thank you. So some prayer requests. Uh, one of the, you, we've heard the prayer requests for the Kananua people and for PNG, the COVID situations there. On a personal level, pray for us as we are in a caregiving role, we are helping with Mark's mom and it is, it is difficult at times. So please pray for us. We are leaving in a few weeks to have a month off while another sibling take care of her and pray for Mark's family, his siblings. They will meet together this Tuesday to talk to their mom. She's a tough one. <laughs> She's a tough one to care for. So pray for that. Pray for our sons. Our biggest concern for them is their spiritual life. When people ask how they're doing, I say they're still boys. They don't want to be girls. They still like girls and they haven't totally walked away from the faith. So those things we can praise them for, but do pray that God will continue to capture their hearts. Our youngest son, Micah, who's a videographer, photographer, he's gifted, but he's a typical missionary kid. He can't stay in one place and he's, it's just hard for him to settle down. And we really are praying for God to put people in his life who will pour into him, mentor him and help settle him down. Tim, the oldest is in Dallas now on Thursday, it's June 10th, Thursday, he's trying to uh, get on board with American Airlines cadet program, which will get him from being a pilot, uh, get him all the way to his commercial license and then flight instructor. He's uh, been selected for the final step and he has that interview, a live interview on Thursday. Pray for him awesome. that if God will, he will give him favor, that he will get in that program and he can continue his flight uh, flight interest. He's passionate about aviation. One day wants to be a bush pilot, but wants to get his commercial license and some experience there. So I think that pretty much covers it for us. Thank you. Uh, what's a bush pilot? Missionary pilot flying. Okay, sorry, uh, pilot. He'd like to fly back in Papua New Guinea. Sorry. <laughs> That's okay. I thought so, but I wanted to be sure. <laughs> well, Mark and Estella, this has been extremely uh, eye-opening. So we want to thank you for your time and for uh, the wonderful presentation. Um, it's, it's hey, can you go in my bag? Awesome, sure there's no that, bugs awesome that we have uh, the ability to connect like this. And uh, for those who are on the phone, um, you missed some of um, the video and visual part of this. Uh, but the Holy Spirit has a way of, of enlightening us. When one sense is gone, the, the, the Holy Spirit can, uh, can bring images to you that we, that we who could see probably wouldn't have those images. Uh, but, but God is moving and uh, um, we also are recording. So when we get back together, maybe uh, sometimes we will play this back. So those of you who didn't get to see it, we can play certain portions of it so that we can, you know, that's the one wonderful thing of being forced into Zoom that we, we have some resources that we otherwise didn't have before. So 
We praise the Lord. And that it's going to be on YouTube also. Yes, it's going to be on our YouTube channel. So, yes, you can go on. Um, most of the people who are on phone obviously don't have YouTube either. But if you can get with a relative or someone who can get to our High Street Church of God uh, on YouTube, uh, you can look today's message up and you will get to see what you didn't see today. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I know time is going, um, but I, I know, Mark, you probably could do this, but um, I'm, I'm sure Estella too, but I could sit down and listen to you guys all day. I, <laughs> wow. It was, it was very, it, you know, it was very emotional um, and, um, you know, it makes us feel like we are wasting uh the blessings that we have you know and when i say that not that we're doing something frivolously but you know in this country it is very easy to abuse the gifts that we have to ignore that others have wants uh you know you we saw those people there some of them with flip-flops some of them barefooted and it didn't matter they were there uh, as you said a picnic uh, if I try that at one of High Street's picnic, I, <laughs> we may get a few people for about five minutes, but uh, not all day, and uh, for sure not into the night that we're just reading the word and 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 learning, memorizing scripture and stuff like that. So it's amazing. We 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 are so blessed in this country. Yeah. The poorest of us are rich to many nations. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, so again, thank you, uh, Mark and Estella. And um, since Mark and Estella will be assisting me in my class on on Thursday, we I teach the leadership focus class, and um, they're going to be our global guests. I think this is going to be the first non church God global guest, but um, you know that's why we do it because Church of God is not. A brand it is the church of God. That's who we are about, the church universal. We are not about trying to isolate people only into uh, the movement that we call church of God. And and um, it's just a blessing. So we look forward to that. Um, we do, we will have our communion at this time. I don't know how many people remembered to bring your communion. This is, this is new to... I should have told you, Mark and Estella, we bring our communion to church. <laughs> we have every first Sunday we do communion. So we bring our communion to church. And, um, and you know, whether you brought it or not, we will still have our communion. And I have my representation of the bread. And I have the bread right here. Um, so um, we will continue to to look to God, the author, finisher, and perfecter of our faith. So let's have a, a word of prayer. Um, we want to pray for even these requests that were uh, made by um, Mark and Estella, and, uh, and as, as well as, as just for the Lord to bless us in our next step. Um, every missions convention that we have, I am moved to wanting to do more for missions. And uh, let's hope that, that, that the Lord will help us in, in this venture. Mm -hmm. Father, we thank you <clears throat> for this wonderful day that you've blessed us. We thank you for the beauty of the earth and the glory of the sky and the love that we have from time we were born till the time we leave. You surround us with your love. We thank you that you love us all. You love the people of Papua New Guinea. You love all of the tribes and tongues of Papua New Guinea. And Lord, we thank you for a people who are burdened to learn more and to have more of you. We pray for this nation, this island nation, Lord, for uh, thank you for the blessings that you provided for it. We pray, oh Lord, that that, that we will see the benefits of, of, of blessings of the natural resources that the people there will get to benefit from the, from the land that they own, that is theirs, that you have blessed them with. 
We thank you for Wycliffe and others who are there to help spread your word. We thank you for this missionary outlook that is trying to bring your word to a people in their language so that they can understand what thus saith the Lord. Lord, we, we talked about the Kananua people and, and, and the others there. There's so many. But Lord, you speak every tongue that they speak because your language is universal. So meet them. Meet uh, the, the young man who is in school, Vernon, Lord. Bless him and, and strengthen him. Thank you for Tim and Micah. Brought up under, as missionary children with the, with the past that they have to face of, of, of being expected to be more than human. But Lord, we pray that you will continue to bless them, bless Tim to get to be successful in this call, in this in this opportunity in aviation, and so that he will get his licenses. Uh, bless Micah with that talent that you have given him, Lord. That beautiful video that we were able to see and experience today, you have put into his mind uh, the creativity of being able to do this. So we thank you, we praise you, we glorify your name. For Mark's mom, uh, minister to her and be real to her. And let her feel your very presence and to know that you are her God and that you've promised to never leave her, never forsake her. You are the God of restoration for her. You're the God of life for her. Uh, raise her up in, in her spirit that she can be anointed and blessed. And for Mark and his um, siblings, Lord, that you would give them all of the patience and all of the wisdom and and whatever the resources that they need to have in order to uh, serve you as they serve their mom. Uh, so Lord, we thank you for this opportunity today and we thank you for this wonderful experience in your presence, how we have been moved by your Holy Spirit. So now Lord, bless us uh, and continue to serve you in the beauty of your holiness, we pray. And now we transition, Lord, as it were, into this great opportunity that we have to honor you, where you say, as oft as we do this, do it in remembrance of you. So, Lord, we remember that you took the bread and you took the bread, that you expounded it and said, this is the your body that, that, that now you will give to us that will be broken and bruised for our sins. And Lord, how the blood that you took the cup and says, you're translating this into a new covenant. And in our new covenant, Lord, the blood that you shed is not just for a, a day, but it's for an eternity. You, your blood is the atonement of sins for all of mankind, for all of the sins of mankind from the beginning to the end. Thank you, Lord, for this powerful experience that we have today as we honor you by remembering what you've done for us, remembering Calvary, remembering Gethsemane, remembering the cross, remembering La Via Dolorosa, Lord, how you walked with us. Bless us now, we pray. Amen. So uh, 1 Corinthians 11 is our passage that we refer to, and I'm just going to read for you a few verses. 1 Corinthians 11, um, I'm going to start at verse 23, and um, again, may continue to bless us as we journey together. Um, verse 23 says, For I received from the Lord what I also pass on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night that he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it. And he said, This is my body, which is for you. Do in remembrance of me. So today we ask you to take the bread that you have that represents the body of Christ and eat it in remembrance of him. Continuing in the scripture, we read, In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. 
Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me, for whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So now we take the cup and drink as unto the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord for, again, this time of fellowship that we have and how we've been able to be blessed uh, uh, to see and hear and, and almost touch, uh, definitely emotionally be touched, but almost to be able to touch uh, the trussles as they were uh, in our very presence today. Uh, so may the Lord continue to bless us. We look forward to his wonderful work of grace that he's doing in us and, and through this wonderful couple uh, that's serving God in Papua New Guinea. And even though they're not there physically, they're still, they're, Papua New Guinea is on their mind. So, uh, and, and therefore it's on our minds. 
Uh, so we will continue to focus on how whatever we can do. And uh, Mark and Estella, keep us appraised of whatever we can do because uh, we're with you. All right, so Middle, you're very welcome. So since uh, we are way past our time, but hey, you're home, I know that. Uh, so uh, enjoy the rest of your day. May the grace of God be with you. May the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest, remain, and abide with us all now and forevermore. And the people of God say, Amen. 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 God bless you. Amen. Good to see you, Good to see you all. Good to see you, Joey. Good to see you all. All right, all right. God bless you. All right. God bless you on. Have a good week. All right. See you Thursday. Uh, yes, uh, Mark. Awesome. Be blessed. God bless you all. I love you all. Have a good week, everyone. Sister Baldwin is having some issues, so she won't be able to. To uh, she can't find the button for sure today. And good afternoon, Pastor. And good afternoon, Sister.